below. Uh, I don't really know what I'm going to talk about in this video. Um, I just don't feel like going to bed. So, I decided to make a video. Um, my roommate, Benjamin Thornton, is absent uh, for the weekend. So, uh, that's pretty much how that goes. Um, my water. It's actually pretty cold. I've been sitting out all day, but it's cold up in Tallahassee. Um, I don't know. Uh, I told people on Facebook I was going to make a video about the uh, government shutdown, but uh, it ended. Um, I still have an opinion on it. Uh, none of these people deserve to be reelected. Um, it's it's kind of insulting that these people tell us that they know what's best when they don't even know what they're doing. Uh, they say they know what they're doing. I mean, people will say they're actually very smart. They are they know what they're doing. They got elected. Mm, that's not really a good litmus test of intelligence. Um, I mean, come on. Sarah Palin, Michelle Bachman, um, geez, you know, I could go on and on. Alan Grayson? Intelligence and elections are not, you know, indicative of one another. But, uh, I guess I could talk about the, the NSA scandal, which isn't really a scandal, it's, um, actually a blessing that we know now that our government, that we actually know for a fact that our government was spying on everyone. I mean, it is, I mean, I, yeah, apparently we colluded with, with other nations, but the fact remains we spy on people outside of our borders. It's wrong or ready to spy on every American citizen. I mean, this is wrong, it violates the Fourth Amendment, it violates every single belief we have of property and privacy, um, because if the government has the ability to wiretap your phones at will, something that you own, I mean, you own that phone that you bought, or that your parents bought, they own that phone. And so the services that are provided via that phone are uh, related and dependent upon your ownership of that phone. In fact, that the government just go in there and do whatever it wants with that phone that you have. You can just listen in your conversations. You can, you know, on, the, on your smartphone, if you have one of those, if you have, a, you know, if you're on your computer, the government can just log on to that thing you own. That thing you own, the technology, of, you know, that, that gives you access to the internet. That the government can go in there, even though you own it, and can just waltz in, I mean, like, it's really the exact same thing as the government to walking into your home whenever they want to and just looking around. You know. Just, nah, 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 nah. We're, just, we're just making sure. We're just checking. Just checking to see if you're thinking. You know. You're not actually on any watch list, but just making sure. You know. It's, it's really scary. Uh, George Orwell really nailed it on the head. Um, except he kind of I mean, get yeah, something's wrong, something's right. But, and, you know, it, it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary. Uh, very scary. And the fact that we are, uh, that we were wiretapping Angela Merkel's phone. Not, I mean, not Kim Jong-un. I mean, that's, that's kind of expected. It's weird. Putin, that's even expected. I mean, Cold War rivalry over the past, you know, it's expected. But Germany? This is not the Germany we fought World War II. You know, this is not Nazi Germany. This is Democratic Republican Germany. I mean, this is free Germany. This is a model country. I mean, yeah, of course it's not perfect. No, this isn't perfect, but it's a very respectable country. It's got a very strong economy. You know, of course, it's not as strong as Asia, as some of the Asian tigers. But it's, it's a model for Europe, at least. I mean, the NSA, the, the spy agencies in general, have a lot of gall. 
to just spy on them because, eh, well, you know, we're trying to prevent terrorism and we're trying to do this. But every instance in which security is named as uh, the reason for restricting the liberty is one reason why we we'll never, we will never get those liberties back. That's why it's so frightening when people talk about gun laws, because yes, it's it's horrible that these shootings happen all the time, but that's the price you pay for freedom. You know, that's the price you pay. The price you pay is that some people get their hands on them they shouldn't. And in fact, a lot of people who do those shootings show signs of instability. The school shootings. The mass shootings, I should say, because they're, they're not all the schools. But, I mean, these people are normal people at all, by any means. Those, those mass murderers are not normal people at all. It's just, just like a serial killer is not a normal person. I mean, those, those people are... Something's not right. And it, and although some people may get offended by, you know, mentally ill, but it's hard to deny the fact that the mind drives everything we do. And so when we go and kill someone, it's a product of the mind wanting to do that. So you can't blame it on the body. You can't blame it on anything other than the mind. Either the weakness of the mind you know, in regards to external factors influencing it, or just the, the, the brain's not wired properly. It happens. It happens, you know. It's, we shouldn't look at mental illness as a taboo. Because if we do, then we run the risk of ignoring the most, the most efficient way to uh, slash the risk of these mass shootings. You know. But back to the NSA... Violating privacy rights is not a way to prevent terrorism. But a way to prevent terrorism is to give the terrorists no reason to attack us. They attack us for specific reasons. You know, Al-Qaeda for its intervention in the Middle East, for stationing troops in Saudi Arabia, is a direct causation of the attack on 9-11. Why? I mean, why, why is that a big deal? Why did... Why Saudi Arabia? Why us putting troops in the Gulf War? Because, because pretty much every one of those terrorists was Saudi. So it's a wonder we didn't invade Saudi Arabia because they all came from Saudi Arabia. It's like maybe one or two of them. But of course, you know they're an ally, so we invade Afghanistan instead. But you know, it's very interesting that terrorist groups usually can trace their um, beginnings to one incident that got them going, you know, for, for the, for Ireland, for the, for the, uh, IRA, it was, it was the fact that when Ireland declared independence, not all Ireland was granted independence, you know, so, uh, that incident when the British government said, oh, yeah, yeah, you're free, but not these guys, the Catholics in Northern Ireland, what the hell, you know, so it's, it's a very rational thing to be angry at something like that. It's very understandable. But, um, that's the thing. If you really want to st stop terrorism or at least curtail it immensely, you can't keep killing them. Because every time you kill them, you reinforce their cause. You know? It's, it serves no point to kill them, essentially. Because, uh, you kill one. And there's always collateral damage. The person has a family. Um, it angers the family because, you know, they're just doing what they believe in. Um, of course, families are often sympathetic to that sort of thing in, in developing regions. And this is actually, terrorism is the exact same thing that the Pope did in the, uh, the Crusades. Or the, Europe, or the Spanish rulers did during the Inquisition. Which ended in the 1800s. I mean, that's pretty recent. But, um... Yeah, it's, 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 it's a very uh, scary thought when governments are taking away freedom for security reasons. Uh, it's, it's not very smart. It's not, um, it doesn't help anyone because as we see, um, terrorism still happens. It doesn't 
hasn't solved anything yet. There hasn't been a 9-11. But there's been hundreds of terrorist attacks since 9-11. You know? Um, so that's that. Uh, yeah. Um, NSA bad. Very bad. It's a, it's a, it's a horrendously evil organization. Um, spying itself is, is kind of sketchy. Um, during times of war, it's a bit more understandable, but we're not at war. We haven't technically been at war since 1945. Every other war we've been in has been some sort of, like, you know, I don't know why I did the quotations, but it's been sort of beating around the bush, you know. They could say Korea was a police action, it's been a fair war. But, um, mainly because the reason they don't declare war anymore is because every time you go to war, there's not a good, there's not a good enough reason to declare war. If, it, if there was a good reason to go to war, you would have no problem getting it through Congress. You know what I mean? We had, we could have declared war on the Taliban, but we didn't. I don't know why. I don't know why we just, you know, go around the Constitution and pigeonhole it. You can't do that. It's a very important document. In fact, I would argue that it is the most important document in the past 500 years. Hands down. Um, so yeah, NSA violates the Constitution. It's evil. It's uh, it's it's just nasty, nasty spying on on allies during peacetime. It's it's unconscionable. Um, so I'm done. This is a long video. It's longer than Desolation Row. So I bid you adieu.